It is October the 16th, 2021, and you are listening to The Future of Photography. The Future of <laughs> Photography. And we're back with another full house. Hey, how's everyone doing? Mm. Imar, Adrian, good. Jeremiah. Hey. Good, good, good. good still good, have good. daylight here, which is good. What? Daylight still, huh? Daylight. Not for many, oh, uh, not are, for long. Yeah. Another week or two and the clocks will go back and it'll dull. be dark. Yeah. Don't, 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 get, don't get me started yeah. on, on summer <laughs> daylight saving BS. No, <laughs> don't. <laughs> um, well, yeah. are, you, are you against that? I mean, totally, is, is, you 100%. An, are you an anti... It is an anti such doesn't a doesn't want statement. to save daylight. It is, no. <laughs> no. They should just leave it alone, shouldn't they? Yeah, is it let's, just because you're yeah. not a farmer? Is that what it is? is, is probably. It's That's probably farmers. the reason. <laughs> <laughs> if I was a farmer, everything would be different. Um, we want to talk about the thing that we... All, all the four of us use every day, multiple times and many times a day, probably. And uh, it is a very Apple-centric episode today because they released not just a new version of their operating system, iOS 15, but also a whole bunch of new iPhones. And uh, that's why it's Has interesting for us. And, sorry, no, not yet. A new iPhone. We have one in the house. Monica got and there's uh, me. a 13 Pro. Imar? There was me thinking I had a new iPhone. And well, it's you have 11. 12. Oh. <laughs> Is it 10 or 11? I can't even remember. It seems to be moving I, so I, fast. I, I got one. I, I got a 13 mini. When, <laughs> I remember the days when Adrian was still on his six. Yeah, yeah. No, that and, wasn't and that you know long ago. <laughs> no, it wasn't that long ago. Do you know what? I miss it. <laughs> <laughs> but now I've got the 13 mini, which is actually smaller than the six that I had. Uh, uh, but the screen is bigger, even though the phone is smaller. So that's cool. So wait, wait. So so we have one 13 mini in uh, in Adrian's pocket. We have, well, I have access to a 13 Pro in this house, but I don't have it here right now because you cannot just take an iPhone from someone for an hour. And that's just <laughs> that you don't do this. One of the things you just don't do to people. And um, 12 Pro Max here. A Pro a 13 extra current Pro Max here? Okay. No, 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 no. A, a 12. A 12. So uh, the 12s and the 13s are. They, they would usually say this is an S generation, like this is the in between step to the next cooler one. <laughs> but. Um, I think if you look at things like cameras and so on, the especially the Pro phones have if they've been updated they've uh they got yeah there's new yeah. stuff you know yeah, a few new guts in mine. there so it's definitely worth mm -hmm. talking about um jeremiah has a hard out today so i would i would like to steer this into a direction that lets uh lets us hear his opinion on the let's say more more hollywood centric <laughs> Stuff. Also, speaking of Hollywood, is, Hollywood, is it Hollywood, do you like the composition of my? <laughs> you are in a different place <laughs> today. <laughs> yes, and you notice the you know the kind of receding, vanishing point. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> very, very geometric set you've got there. Yeah, very take, good. It just fell off the truck that way. Yeah. So, <laughs> <laughs> so, so why why don't we dive in? I, th I think we'll we'll just skip between like or or hop between the, the software and the hardware and the different versions. Um, there's one thing that I think is, is, uh, is, is interesting to people because it's really new and it's on all the 13 phones and that's called cinematic mode. Mm, yeah, what is it only on the 13? Does it not come as part of the software for the other ones then? I haven't found it on my 11. I don't think so, no. I'm still on oh, an 11 yeah. here. I haven't found it. I think I it's a 13. I haven't found it on the 11. Oh, okay. Oh, just, yeah. uh, I so mean, I they're selling it as ha hardware. I mean, that's the oh, right. so. So, what does it do? Of it is. What does it do? Uh, basically, it's it's uh, it uses AI, as I understand it, since I haven't used it. But friends of mine have been raving about it. It basically creates the very thing that uh, we do cinematically, which is draw attention against and for um, refocusing, etc. So it it does focus changes intelligently so-called uh so that it, it will <laughs> intelligently 
Uh, obviously, I don't know who's training it because I'm not sure if you wanted to force it not to do it, that would also be interesting. Like sometimes we will compose something and play a scene where we are racking focus, which means shifting the focus uh, to provoke the attention on who's talking or who's reacting. Um, and sometimes we want to even hold that back and just concentrate on foreground and not rack. Um, but for the average user, um, doing a two shot or having two people in the frame slightly wide where the focus is shifting back and forth on dialogue, uh, the camera is supposed to perform admirably. So uh, that's a hats off. That's a very sophisticated thing to do if it's picking up audio as the trigger, uh, because I'm assuming the composition is not shifting. What, that point. what I've seen in the examples is that it's not just picking up audio, but it's picking up um, the gaze of someone. The example they show is that someone is looking into the camera and then they're looking at someone else and the focus shifts to that other person. So yeah. it seems to be, I don't I, know exactly if that's the trigger, but it seems like it. It's always interesting when you play with any kind of AI um, software or hardware combo. Um, the overrides, if if it's uh, if it's tweakable, uh, just in terms of is it a slow transformation of focus or a fast one? Um, can I hold it back? Can I delay it? Can I identify a moment where I want to shift the focus? Mm -hmm. So it may not be on the first glance; it may be uh, a few beats after. So that that's where the um, the kind of you know, the separation of a real quality cinematic hardware uh, software combination would really be effective if you're using it for filmmaking and they're promoting it as a filmmaking tool. And I know uh, much to the chagrin of, of many that there are commercials now where uh, the directors are choosing just to shoot on iPhone, <laughs> um, which, which I think is a terrific thing, but it's hard to convince the clients who are spending several hundred thousand dollars a day and you go like okay action <laughs> right and they have it you know you need to make a bigger operation there to kind of uh just so once yeah. you once you get it in yeah once you get it in a rig with a map box and stuff like that i'm sure you can make your iphone look big but <laughs> I, I mean I, so so mm -hmm. to, to i've had a play with this uh, a little bit of a play with this uh and uh, i haven't i so, sort of deliberately uh i i didn't look at any of the how you're supposed to do it i just sort of dived into the the stock camera app and and and, and chose cinematic mode and and had a play um there's you know as ever with the the stock app uh it's a fairly minimal interface <laughs> So as you Apple are just does, so, yes. <laughs> so I just peck at it with my finger and see what happens, right? As you as you do with these things, yeah, just to see to see what what happens. Um, the so I tried a couple of things. Uh, I haven't tried the two shot, so I can't report back on on how effectively that works or not. But what I have tried, I've tried a little bit of movement, um, and I've tried keeping the camera stationary, but with depth in the shot. Uh, and and to see what happens so with with the movement uh, i was struggling a little bit um I, I it just sort of seemed to do its standard auto focusing thing you know uh that 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 was that um we're keeping it stationary though uh it seemed a bit more interesting um so you can touch it you seem where you used to have just a simple press just to change to to, to set the focus point while you were in the middle of recording um that now it seems to be a long finger press and and if you if you touch it just briefly um it seems to do something automatic it'll like put these frame lines around parts of the screen that parts of the composition that it thinks it's going to be in focus for and stuff like that i think and um, so you, it, it wasn't immediately intuitive but you know i'm sure if i actually <laughs> sat down and, and tried to figure out or watch some videos or, or whatever i'm sure it'll come to me um, and then isn't the that, edits. It's, sorry, go on, Chris. Now, isn't that interesting? How the iPhone used to be this like very simple device, but over the years it has <laughs> added so yeah. much complexity that it's really, really difficult to just discover new things in in 
in a certain way you really have to look at some some tutorials now sometimes yeah. yes and yeah, i haven't tried yeah. any of the third party camera apps yet to see if they can access the cinematic mode so i really have just had a basic play with it right. do um, you like uh, filmic pro is that something that you would recommend as a software that has some sophistication yeah i mean i've used film i've used filmic pro for years um and i have the full you know you can buy the director's pack or whatever it is that lets you shoot in log and and chain and, and all sorts of stuff like that uh and uh yeah i mean I, I quite like filmic pro um it was especially made a lot easier after they released the delogging luts so you could at least get back to something that's a little bit normal um it it, it can be a little over complex at times but if you want a bit more control um then it's definitely there and you know i have my presets in filmic pro that to allow me to shoot at 24 frames um a, a second uh you know so you just put put an nd on the front of it and um you know nd filter on the front of it and but then you're starting to get into sort of it's not take it out of your jeans pocket anymore yeah you know, you've got to yeah. you've got to have the case that can put the if filter you're going to go to it, that level of... the nd filter you've got to you yeah. know etc 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 so it starts to be a little less spontaneous at that point <laughs> so Imar? here's a question it just you know for, from somebody that uses it is it is there that much can you set things up before you take the camera out so that you can just pull it out of your pocket and open the app and go for it uh can you kind you of can. build your own packages of favorites you can i mean the 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 smallest uh, the 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 having to put an nd filter on it though means that it's not really a sort of front jeans pocket um at least not for me no. but, you know uh, you could easily set it up so that you can have stuff around it to to use it so all right uh, Sorry, Let, go on. Yeah, I'll, I'll just try to steer it. We have used ten minutes on the one feature now, um, <laughs> so this episode will never end. Um, well, just let me say something about editing cinematic then before we go. So just a quick of course. thing on editing cinematic is that um, what happens with if if you are if you do a long press on the screen when you're shooting and refocus it, those become keyframes in the video. Mm. Now, I haven't figured out how to do any editing around the keyframes yet. But uh, you can, you can. But, but, you mm. can, but you can do that. So, I, so um, yeah, it, it, the, again, the editing interface, especially on the mini phone, is a little bit fiddly. But. <laughs> um, let, let, me, let me jump to a software feature in Apple Photos that came out to iOS 15, and that is on all phones, and it has been for a while. Um, does any of you use Memories? No, but I had one pop up in front of me this morning, and it had summer twenty twenty one on it, and I went, "Oh, oh and actually, th that's it, was, exactly, it was quite a good summer." That's an inter <laughs> interesting. I, I don't, yeah, yeah. I, I so, don't so, know if I so, use it. It uses me. It just, yeah, yeah, I didn't ask yeah. for it. So, but, so the reason you know, I'm asking sweet. is um, because this is a feature that looks at events by geography, by date, and so on, and it. It makes some AI analysis of pictures and chooses the one where most people smile and that kind of stuff. And just, just makes a positive little um, video out of this, put some music on it, and then you have a memory of our trip to such and such in uh, mm -hmm. last year. These kind of things. And uh, it, it doesn't, well, it allows you very rudimentary editing, as in, oh, this picture doesn't belong there, take this one out, mm. and these kind of things. But the rest is fully automated. Um, Jeremiah, you as a director who's used to be in control and um, used to tell mm -hmm. the, the DP what to do and tell the actors what to do, well, if they let you, then th this, is, this takes you all the control out of it. Is that something that you find relaxing or does it... <laughs> Does it drive you up the wall? Would, <laughs> it depends on the day. It depends mm. on, for example, if the presentation is spot on perfect in terms of the combination and the music, I go, wow, I did a great job. <laughs> 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 if it's terrible, then you go like, what's this? What are they doing with my pictures? I mean, they, um, they, these memories tend to be quite cheesy, to be honest. No kidding. Yeah, the music does cheesy. help too. Yeah. Make it you can choose your own cheesy. music now. You can choose your own music now if you want to. They so what would that mean if you there. did some harsh speed metal against, you know, baby pictures? <laughs> against you know, pictures of your, of your pets and stuff. Yeah, why not? Exactly. It'd give you a different theme. 
emotionally. The, the one new feature in iOS 15 that I've come to use several times now and really enjoy is called live text. If you point that camera oh, at, cool. at yeah. text in, yeah. in the wild, on a wall, on a menu, on a price tag, yeah. you can just really copy good. and paste it as if it was typed in an editor and then paste mm. it into your really? notes and so on. Yep. It, and it works wow. really remarkably well. I have I've done like photos with really something in. I've seen an example of uh, of kids in uh, students in uh, in a school, and they all had their laptops, and one was stealing the other's notes over their shoulder by taking a photo and then <laughs> copy pasting their notes oh into God. their uh, <laughs> word. So uh, <laughs> it, it is it is extraordinary. I mean, it, I, I don't know. I can do a little bit of a demo for, for people watching. So I've just taken a photo of our show notes. I don't know if that's going to come through or not, um, but I can select the text. Just I uh, select the text yeah. in our show notes as if it was just typed in. On and that's screen. a photo of them. That's and not, that's a photo yeah. of our show notes. Yes. At an at taken at an angle. So and it I mean, even it, works it is, at, with weird fonts and that kind of stuff. I, it's yeah. Mm. It's it's very impressive, actually. I, I really is it like English that. only, or is it multilingual? No, whatever language it... you're in. I haven't tried it on my handwriting yet. Maybe I'll try it on my handwriting. So, for <laughs> for example, you could take a, a, a picture of a, a, a sign in Chinese, copy and paste it, run it through Google Translate, and get a rough idea. Oh no, you can already do that's, this. That's so 2020, Go Jeremiah. Surely it'll do that in <laughs> AR live, won't it? Google Google Translate does that in AR live. You point too. the camera I've at it. I've used it. <laughs> I've used it. I've used it. Isn't in Google China. Translate I've, dreadful? I've used it in Is China, it? and like sometimes I think you it's get awful. poetry, the likes of which you just can't <laughs> That's believe. That's exactly what it is good what for. They said. And sometimes it's very accurate, but it does not mm. have any consistency. Whatsoever. Well, if, if you yeah. if you are in Moscow and you're in a taxi and the taxi driver only speaks Russian, it is very helpful to point that yeah. thing at them uh, and and say, "I need to get to the train station." and It'll, yeah, it'll could, and and uh, the 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 Apple oh, translate does speech. that now. Hmm? Yeah. They could do that. Never, I've only ever used it in text. Need, I got that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but you know, I, I'm looking for a hedgehog. You know, in your bushes, <laughs> sir. You know, I think that would I'm be. not sure what what kind of weird experiences you had. It works really well for me. <laughs> um, <laughs> back to photography. Back to photography. Um, how about ProRes? Uh, one of the pro camera features of the iPhone 13 Pro Max. It's not there yet. I think they want to update this via software. ProRes is a codec. ProRes is um, is a way to compress data, video data when you shoot so that it's easy to edit later on. And it's used in the in professional contexts. I'm pretty sure, Jeremiah, that uh, the, whatever you do, you shoot in, you edit in ProRes. It's kind probably. of a standard. It's a standard. You know, yeah. So uh, I, yeah, this this is a really interesting one because yeah, with older computers, you, uh, uh, the the compression, the standard H.264 or 265 compression is so so much compression for older computers struggle to run it, especially for editing. And so, you know, for, for years, it's been a standard to even just in post-production and editing to, to convert to ProRes, which is a much easier codec. So it's a lot, much yeah, bigger. <laughs> yeah, well, it is almost a bigger. So, so the thing for me about it's like, why, why put all that development into an M1 chip that can natively edit H.265 really smoothly if they are then going to give everybody ProRes or vice versa? I, it's, it's, it's a strange one um, for mm, me. I don't it think it's strange. strange. I don't think it's no? strange because... Well, what am I missing then? Why, what's the point of ProRes in a phone? <laughs> well, H.264, H.265 is, is, is highly compressed. So you end up with artifacts. It's like, it's like trying to edit JPEG and you mm. get weird artifacts in the sky because there's not so much information there. Um, I think it has to do with what you want to do with the footage afterwards. Like right this. and 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 ProRes is interesting for those who want to use this as a professional tool that produces uh, video files that are editable later. Now, unfortunately, ProRes creates humongous files compared to H.264. So, what we're looking at is uh, well, that's, that's one of the reasons why the iPhone 13 Pro I think comes with up to 1 terabyte of memory. <laughs> a, it's an, insane. A terabyte <laughs> of memory. So, um, Jeremiah, which uh, version did you get? 
<laughs> <laughs> I'm still running the previous operating system. I, I tend to now uh, wait until there's two updates to the OS before yeah. I before I move on to it. Uh, and I, I I've just learned that I just don't have the time uh, to basically experiment and debug hardware software anymore i, I just I let you. others do it when it's there landed stable and works with everything because normally you know you go like i used to just dive in it's like third of your apps aren't ready doesn't run it's got to be updated when is it going to happen and chaos reigns when i have a stable um and it, this is true of my computer and my phone and my ipads everything I will. I will generally. That's why when they run spaceships, they generally run really old school chips. You know, eighty sixes. I mean, now they've moved on a bit, but they usually wait until it's had a thirty or forty year stability yeah, uh, yeah. before they kind of put it into critical, um, you know, procedures. And that's it, me. Uh, it, it's yeah. It's yeah, so. I guess the. I guess the question, Jeremiah, I mean, I know you haven't had a chance to try it yet, but do you think a phone is going to have sufficient camera quality to allow you to capture in ProRes and uh, actually make, take advantage of the codec that has more information in it? To be honest, I, well, it, I, I, would, I would expect his next production to have at least a handful of iPhone shots in there without telling anyone. <laughs> <laughs> You're 100% right. Small, small uh, pickups you know, here and there, I think it's no problem. Uh, uh, ab yeah. Absolutely. And being able to shoot with, uh, you know, with a professional Kodak and bury it in for uh, just a sweeping shot, uh, transition, etc. Absolutely nobody would ever be able to tell. Specifically, because I'm making television, uh, that is very, I'm going to say, relatively forgiving. You know, if I was shooting an IMAX <laughs> film, I don't think <laughs> I would pick it up that easily, right? <laughs> um, you know, di you know, ditto on a big cinematic, big screen uh, image. Not that it could be done, because it could be done, but you'd need a lot of effects work afterwards. In, in other words, the cost savings of shooting it with an iPhone and processing it, which can be done artificially, um, to match would probably be an inefficient waste of, of money when you could just pick up another camera. So, so it, it probably it, it's probably great as like a kind of a sketchbook, like a visual sketchbook. For well, you. we use like, that often as a sketchbook, yeah. like, uh, you know, with Artemis and whatnot, just selecting lenses and, and moving through locations and, and all of that stuff. So yes, for sure. Also, um, you know, doing a, a frame grab, for example, I'll have my and you see, uh, send me some screen grabs, and I could do some very sophisticated, whether it's in Lightroom or Sky, you know, mm. whatever it is, and, and send that to the lab. I've matched my screens to the lab colorist, so it's pretty close, color bars. And he'll have an idea of what's in my head just for the dailies, yeah. contrast overall. Won't be final, but be close. Okay, uh, one, really, really efficient and handy, isn't it? One more new feature. Is there an ambulance? <laughs> isn't it interesting what the AirPods, no, the, 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 the EarPods, AirPods <laughs> make out of that sound? It sounds really weird. That does that sound sounds weird. really weird. <laughs> this is. Sound like you went underwater. Isn't really. It? <laughs> um, <laughs> here's another, um, another new thing that might, that, that, it's one of one of the things that is pushing me towards getting a pro camera phone, and that is the macro. The wide lens now ah. can do macro. It can get as close as two centimeters. That's under one inch wow. of uh, distance to things, which I find... Great fun. Which, yeah, having that in your pocket, just, just like that... Mm. It is interesting, isn't it? I love, I love me a bit of macro shooting. Um, me yeah, too. Just, love just me a, a just, bit macro. Just a bit of, <laughs> <laughs> just a bit of point and shoot stuff. I mean, I'm, I'm not somebody who will, who will, you know, set up a the right kind of flower on a tripod and then set up lights and a nice background and stuff like that and wait for the butterflies to arrive. But I do, you know, sometimes you just see something, something catches your eye, and you think that's lovely. I'm gonna do, I'm gonna, do, I'm gonna get that. Um, and I think. 
being able to do that in, in a phone would be really useful. I mean, having said that, if it's just in the pro phone, I guess I've just volunteered out of that, haven't I? Mm-hmm. But the, uh, I de- you know, traditionally, I've always carried a little point and shoot camera to, to do that if I fancied you know, or just, you know, see something in, in, in the garden I'd like to get, you know, and just run and get a camera that can do it, but only a point and shoot camera. Um, have it on a I'm phone. With, I'm with useful. Chris on this. This would tip me to getting at that it, phone. Just this, is, that. this is an wow. Al- I, I think what, what Apple's doing, there, and by the way, we are talking about Apple now, but all the smartphones right now are adding a lot of these things. So this is not just Apple. Um, but th- this this is an outright assault on existing cameras, on DSLRs, on mirrorless cameras, um, which... Uh, the, the latest piece of news from that front, I've just heard that uh, that Canon is stopping to make a whole bunch, like thirty of their EF lenses. So they are oh, they are they're phasing. moving on though, aren't they? That's their old lens mount. Now, oh, they, they're isn't they're it? phasing. They're, they're, this is mm-hmm. an official admission that they're phasing out their 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 mirrored cameras. So they need the resources to 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 fend off the the the, the smartphone attacks yeah now i think it, that's a really interesting point you see that as a you know uh an, an another assault on dedicated cameras because uh, i guess maybe because with, with dedicated cameras at least in interchangeable lens cameras i i've never never owned a macro lens um yeah and uh yeah so so for me macro has always been something you do with a little point and shoot camera um which is so it, yeah i hadn't thought about that macro was macro in a phone killing off big camera sales and from and from my tests it's looking fairly good so okay cool all right nice anyway yeah, I, I, think that, I think that maybe if we're talking about the future of of photography that we may get to a point where it will be a smartphone kind of capture mechanism. And then the next leap is a much larger chip size in a camera, whether they call well, it medium format or what. They have already updated in the pro phones the size of the sensors. So we are already going to bigger sensors. And you see this in the in the size <clears throat> in the size of the camera bump on the Pro 13 Pro, 13 Pro Max, which is, is it big? Sick significantly bigger than what it was on the 12 pro and 12 pro max it is really the 12 pro max is big <laughs> they have they, they have it in these little plateaus so it's a little stair stepping there's first there is this 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 main plateau and then there's the rings and then there's the lens part and this together wow. is like if you look at it from the side it's like two-thirds of the actual phone see, see that doesn't wow. bother me in the slightest i've always mi- i've always struggled to understand why people get so obsessed about the size of the well, camera bump on your phone and it's just, it's just it's, it still fits in your pocket and it's and it's clear <laughs> if they put bigger sensors in physics just dictates that the yeah. cameras have to be yeah. deeper so it's just what's happening. until we get the, until we get those those little flat lenses that have like tiny tiny lenses over every pixel until we get those in phones then um, <laughs> yeah which is possibly a little way out yet so Imar, which of these features is going to tip you over tip me over the one i like the best is actually when you receive a photo by text message that now there's a share button and you can just kind of share it with that. yourself and it saves it into an album, shared with me album, which, uh, which is brilliant. Which is, and, and, it, and if you receive multiple photos in a message, they now stay together and... In a lovely stack and everything. Yeah. Yeah, that looks really useful, I think. Because you ever tried to find a picture? There's there's one more and photo. And you know, if somebody sends you a picture, you think you've downloaded it or saved it and you really haven't, and then go back, try and find it again. Blech. So uh, that's interesting because I have a question about that because I was flicking through my photos on my phone the other day and I saw a couple and I thought I don't recognize those (laughs) and they'd been auto magically added by from Facebook I think a a, 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 a broader family Facebook group Uh, and I don't know uh, whether those have been added uh, to my photos and saved in my photos or whether it's just showing them there but they still sit in the other app so 
What does anybody know? What is the case there? Because because the thing I is that I worry either. about is if somebody puts a, po- a photo in WhatsApp or yeah. another app that you really really like, and you think, oh, that's okay, I can see it in my photos. Then if it's not saved there, if it's just reading it from elsewhere, mm. I, I'm not sure. I, exactly I, I don't so. think it will just uh, use up space on your phone. I think it's in the cloud because because you are in the cloud, your photos are in the cloud anyway, and then it just downloads them whenever it's necessary. I believe yeah, that's does it. Does it, Dan, does it save? My experience you have to actually save it. Uh, but you yeah, can like just in save WhatsApp it manually. Or any of those things, yeah. Into like you this, this shared yeah. album kind I, of thing. I have a question for, for all of you. Is there a purpose-built color-correcting application that just does that well? Well, ah, the, I was with you until the last word of your question. Mm. <laughs> I know that there are <laughs> that there are Not ecosystems anything. that stick that stay within their own realm, but um, there is no like the ICC stuff that you have on your Macs and other computers, which is the color management like system. Like a Da Vinci, you know, a mini Da Vinci. <sighs> you know, so, so the mini Da Vinci would clearly be Luma Fusion at this point, which, as it goes through really successive releases, is getting cleverer with the way it does coloring. But if you're, you you specifically use the word correction, uh, and if you mean that in the technical sense rather than a creative grade, then I, I don't think I am aware of any apps that will do technical color correction. Uh, so that uh, it leads me to the iPhone 13, uh, the color space, right? Um, I, I suspect it must be close to 422 if it's ProRes, right? Well, it's, it's, their, um, it's their P3 color whatever, space for photos. Yeah. Um, for video, I'm not sure what, what they're using. Yeah, I don't know what they're keeping. So, yeah, it would be interesting to know what how their, their neutral color space is and if they've changed it. That would be interesting. Um, yeah. I, I think we're really at a tipping point here uh, over the next few years, and certainly all the rumors have it that the next iPhone is going to be a radical uh, or semi-radical design change. Um, and and uh, obviously, they seem to feel that the camera functions, as well as their services, are really driving. Oh, it's the main driver, the, for sure. The definitely. main driver. Mm-hmm. Uh, and, and so... You can imagine a company sitting on a quarter of a billion dollars worth of cash has the resources to really uh, put a lot of R&D into uh, upgrading this. The last mm-hmm. bit of information on their development of cameras is like a couple to three years ago was that they had, back then, they had six to 800 people working just on the camera stuff. So, which, yeah. is, which is crazy, isn't which, it? Yeah. I mean, that's, that's a huge yeah. organization. Mm-hmm. I mean, when you add that to the fact that, I mean, again, like probably from similar time ago, uh, I, I had heard that they had something over a thousand chip designers, you know, um, working on these chips. So it's, you think, how on earth can they get these major step changes in chips uh, every year? You know, uh, and but but they've got. <laughs> well over a thousand hardware chip designers mm-hmm. you know if if the stat still remains correct um the you know they're working on this stuff so yeah well, i'm i'm kind of knocked out on this this is i mean chris has the same machine we have these uh basically macbook airs running an m1 chip i was thinking this is going to be kind of an interregnum computer for me while the macbook pro I no. love this computer. This is like <laughs> I'm loving mine. Mine's mine's the the, the entry level the M1 MacBook Pro. I tell you what, the difference is so quite good. astonishing between the Intel and the M1 because I have so my own personal laptop is uh, an M1 MacBook Pro. Um, my work laptop is an Intel MacBook Pro, but it's a 2020. In fact, a 20. Well, I don't know what the model is, but I only got it a few months ago. Um, and it's so they look identical right uh, apart from the intel one has a few more ports on it um but the uh, it's amazing even doing something basic like video calling um my m1 now it's cool to the touch uh if i was using my intel chip um computer 
it would be warm and most and by the end of the day because i do a lot of video calls and things like that for my work and by the end of the day the fans are running and i sometimes have to a jet engine Mm. starting next to you about about three o'clock in the afternoon sometimes i have to reboot the machine just to clear down or you know uh, but with the m1 it just sits there cool as a cucumber and you never even know (laughs) that it was taking a breath all right we have uh well jeremiah has a Heart stop in a few minutes. So let's um, take this over to the picks of the week. And Jeremiah, yours goes first. What have you brought us? I've brought us uh, a VPN uh, since uh, that's my life right now. Old school. <laughs> we're, 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 uh, you mean we're, we're advertising something for free that other podcasts are getting paid for to advertise it? <laughs> that's a good point <laughs> to this particular product, isn't it? Yeah. We need sponsors. We need sponsors. So, uh, I would say that I have used many, many VPNs, uh, all manner of VPNs, and uh, you know, including Tor, which is really excellent um, but the Nord VPN is a real dazzler when it comes to being able to just connect with one's own subscription models globally. The others uh, are kind of hunt and peck and some things work, some things don't. Uh, it specifically works very well on an iPad uh, and, and uh, on an iPhone. Um, as we get into more, um, I guess, hard wall international borders of what is available in each territory, um, this becomes uh, much more important for those of us who spend some time on the road. Um, and uh, I, I just wanted to give a shout out to them because their, their product is really proving to be fantastic. It's, Very cool. it's really interesting. We invite just, your sponsorship. Well, we d- yes, absolutely. But if, if only there was you know, uh, a, a union of, of countries across a whole continent that could share stuff easily. I don't know. It's, it's a crazy <laughs> thought, I know. But like. All right. Um, mine is next, and it uh, ties nicely into <laughs> what we talked about in the first part of the show. It is a video by a channel called Jerry Rick Everything. And this guy takes <laughs> a, takes apart the iPhone 13 Pro Max camera <gasps> system. Oh and God. it gives you an idea on how big these cameras are in there and how much space they actually need. And he goes further. He, um, he, he really goes to town. He rips out. He opens it up from the back. He rips out... Uh, the whole thing he takes the sensor out he shows the sensor shift like the moving sensor uh for stabilization this kind of things mm-hmm. and as a as a kid i used to take things apart and usually also put them back together and uh so i won't do this with an iphone but uh, that's <laughs> that's his job and he's doing a really good job showing these kind of things from the inside that's so, cool. That is that I'd heard that the camera modules were bigger, but that's like a sizable oh, they are much, piece of much, metal in his hand. Isn't much, it? much bigger. Um, yeah. We'll link that in the show notes, so that uh, should be uh, should, should be interesting for the nerds among you. Um, <laughs> Emar, what did you bring us? Speaking of nerds. <laughs> <laughs> Speaking of nerds. <laughs> This is kind of nerdy, but it's it's lovely. Now, I don't know if I've just been sold on style, and I don't think I'm going to be able to really um, get the most out of it unless I pay for it. But I'm very tempted. Um, what is it's it? It's lovely. It is a Flow by Moleskin Studio. So, you know Moleskin who make the notebooks? Yeah. Sure, doesn't yeah, love yeah. a Moleskin notebook? So, it's um, you can sketch in there. You can do things with photographs. You can... It's like you can journal in it. Like, I, can, I don't know. I see lots of possibilities for ways of using it in an everyday kind of way. Um, cool. With the, on the iPad, I'm thinking. Does it, pencil, does it and, interface with the actual paper books in some way? Like, does it I, recognize I the books so you can, you can take pictures of them and they sort them into I haven't even had the... time to, it, that would be very cool, explore it that deeply. But um, your live text... <laughs> Um, you know, photograph the text in your notebook and put it in your <laughs> digital moleskin. You could do that. Um, yeah, so I'm, I'm, I've am i only just got it. Um, it's very stylish and, and lovely. And for drawing and painting and, and Yeah, and I'm not sure if I'm just kind of being totally sold on the design or not, but um, 
Definitely. Well, that's an important part of it, though, because if you're going to use I something a lot, it mm. it should be you know, it should be easy to use and fun to use, and you should enjoy yeah. using it. I mean, that's why there are so many of these different type, you know, different types of the same thing, isn't there? So it's yeah. it's it's the choice. It's, it's the choice. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. So, yeah. All right. And last look. but not least, um, Adrian, you brought us uh, it's, yep. something that's not so from this the is, visual field. No, this is from the audio, audio field. So, you know, out and about a bit more now, but still when I'm out and about doing a lot of video calls and, and we've got uh, we've got Jeremiah uh, in, from his, in from his AirPods today. Uh, so this is uh, this is the Rode Smart Lav microphone. It could be any lav mic uh this happens to be the one that i have um so for anybody that's still got uh, a phone that uh, has a headphone jack you can plug it directly in because it's a trrs um, uh, i don't have one of those but there's any number of converters to whatever you need um, and i use it uh for when i'm out and about and traveling so i put the audio through my earbuds my bluetooth earbuds and i just plug in the lav mic and if you don't uh, have a a, 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 a a microphone port, you can use an adapter, right? Yeah, so that's what yeah. I have. Yeah, so I have. Um, I just bought a, a little USB C dongle um, that allow that I plug into the side of my laptop, and and it allows you to plug a microphone into that. Um, I've actually got the double version of that with the two lav mics for interviews. Oh, right, cool, awesome. yeah. Yeah, very handy for the phone. Yeah, very, very and um, I just think, you know, la lav mics for everybody these days, I think. So, I mean, I'm not somebody that enjoys wearing a headset or, or carrying <laughs> one around when I'm traveling or anything like that. So if you, I've already got my earbuds, to have a little lav mic in the, in a in my bag doesn't weigh anything and mm. means that I, uh, I I get better audio out of... You know, a, a mobile setup. So, is that a hint? No, not in the slightest. Because I thought you you've been practicing, haven't you? You've got a whole travel kit that you've been working through and testing. And <laughs> yeah, stuff gen like that. generally when I'm back in my temporary abode on the island, um, I think that because I'm, I have a lot of up and down fiber, uh, the microphone, it'll get a microphone and my headset, uh, really delivering better quality than. What I was giving you at home. So, <laughs> Shout out to Vancouver Island and their good internet connection. Yeah, are yeah you, absolutely. Are you, are you stuck on the mainland then at the moment? Uh, I'm on the mainland. I've been here for, for a week in Vancouver and I'm trying to beat the big storm coming out to get back. So that, you know, luckily um, my flight leaves in literally uh, one hour. You'd better uh, go. Okay, oh, this, is, but, this but, is the but, trigger to start the outro. The <laughs> yeah that's a good idea yeah do it oh there it is i can hear it excellent How dedicated i am yeah this Flying is wonderful music. well i hope you beat the storm jeremiah i hope this yeah. isn't the last time we speak to you on our little <laughs> podcast. It is, it's life. well we'll we'll see how often we can get, get you back in the, on the future episodes with all the like busy work that you're doing right now um anyway thanks everyone for being here and oh there's the ambulance again mm. um thanks for listening thanks for tuning in make sure to watch it this on video because it's fun to see us do funny <laughs> things on camera and uh you can find us online of course at thefutureofphotography.com we'll be back soon until then everyone take care and bye 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 bye, -bye. You've been listening to The Future of Photography. Subscribe to the show wherever you get your other podcasts. Find the show notes and more information at thefutureofphotography.com. <laughs> <laughs>